WBOC's Evan Kozlov. Fox 21's Evan Kozlov. WBOC's Evan Kozlov. WBOC's Evan Kozlov. Fox 21's Evan Kozlov joins us live in Del Mar with the latest. Evan, uh, you may have learned a little bit more today about what happened. Yes, yeah, Steve, I'm here at the cornfield where it all happens. Here in Chopper 16, it is evident that we are just in the beginning stages of this project here in Laurel. And take a look down below. Now, summer might officially be over, but if you take a look around me, it might as well still be July. Dial the number of NASA and you'll get a message. Currently closed due to the lapse in government funding. Closed and people are furloughed, even right here at Wallops. We've all been there before. You're driving down the road and you see that flash in the air. You've been caught by one of the speeding cameras. A couple of decades ago, the idea that somebody could print out an object would have seemed impossible. But as computer technology advances, it's becoming a reality. And here's how it works. Inside the box, you'll find pills like this one, 24 tablets. You crush them all apart and the result is one of the ingredients for meth. Here on State Street is where the states collide. Here on my left, you have Delaware. On the right, you have Maryland. Or take a look over here where the garage door is open. It's the day that students have been waiting for all summer. And from up here in Chopper 16, we have a great view down below at the school. Neighbors are just shocked about the events that happened right here behind me. From Myrtle the Turtle to Pallades the Shrimp Boat to Red Poppies, they all have one thing in common. It's all art. Paul, it is night and day. I got a tour today of the new and old police department buildings in Del Mar. These softball tournaments have always been a big boost to the local economy, but now there's not just one tournament, but two. It's not common that you could literally measure progress in feet, but that's what you could do right here at the Sussex County Airport. 500 feet, the difference between the old runway and the new one. If you close your eyes and listen to the sounds of the Ocean City Inlet, you might think you're in Cancun or on the coasts of Uruguay. De donde eres? Del Salvador. Peru. De Puerto Rico. Buenos días, Puerto Rico. Evan Perry is urging businesses here in Maryland to leave their home state and move to the Lone Star State. Yeah, everything is bigger in Texas, and Governor Perry is looking to make it even larger, asking Maryland businesses to take a chance in his home state a message Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley was not too happy about. And so that set the stage for a real political showdown. On the left, Democrat Martin O'Malley. On the right, Republican Rick Perry. Come to Texas. We're wide open for business. The unofficial slogan, Texas Governor Rick Perry has been boasting throughout the country. Paid ads have filled up TV screens across the nation. And this week, the attack turned towards Maryland. When you grow tired of Maryland taxes squeezing every dime out of your business, think Texas. Perry spent $500 million on the ads, criticizing Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley. What's the reason? And now the two faced off in a political showdown on CNN, talking Obamacare, taxes, and of course, jobs. Martin's state lost 4,700 jobs in July. That's the fact. You lost 4,700 jobs in July. Texas created 18,200. We have the number one median income in the country you have the 25th median income. Well, they're a lot more expensive. Some Maryland business owners, such as Rob Mulford, owner of Market Street Inn in downtown Salisbury, says Perry has a point. It's not a matter of if I shut my doors, it's just a matter of when. Mulford said that he did see Perry's ad and that it did resonate with him, because in his opinion, Maryland does have too high taxes. But that doesn't mean he's just about ready to move to Texas, but elsewhere, maybe in Delmarva? Yes. I could say if I could close my doors tomorrow and be in North Carolina or Delaware, I would have my clo doors closed at midnight tonight to get out of the state of Maryland. Others, though, such as Gallo Paguay, owner of Cafe Milano, says it's going to take more than taxes to make him leave his beloved eastern shore. I'm kind of used to this life, so I'm not going to change it. Maybe it's time to move your business to Texas. Or maybe not. A message being hotly contested in Maryland. Now, in response to Perry's insults, O'Malley did shoot back. He called Perry's ads a tired, old public relations gimmick and urged people to consider Maryland's high education rankings and their affordable college rates. Back to you guys. Yeah, you know, in this day and age, many people seem to be attached to the hip with their cell phones. But now many people are putting these phones away before they get behind the wheel of their car. And they're doing this not only to avoid accidents, but also to try and avoid getting tickets here in Maryland. In Salisbury, cars zoom by on Route 13, and some are on the phone. But now, doing this without a hands-free device could lead to a ticket of 75 bucks or more in Maryland. 
I think it'll save lives. That's the bottom line. I mean, it'll keep people from not paying attention to what they're doing while they're driving. That's Jim Smith of Ocean City, a father of two. He hopes this law will keep drivers' eyes on the road and not on their phones. That two seconds is all it takes to kill kill anybody, you know, and, and you'd, never live, you'd never be able to live with it anyway. I wouldn't be able to live with it, so it would be a hard thing, you know. Open the door. Turn on the engine and put the phone away. Brand new law in Maryland, but if you live near Delaware, then you know that this is nothing new. In Delaware, they've had this law for years. Meanwhile in Maryland, talking on the phone was already illegal, but now it's a primary offense. That means you can get pulled over just for talking on your cell phone without a hands-free device. First time caught, you'll get fined $75. Do it again, that'll climb even higher. Bluetooth, where are your Bluetooth? It's just that simple for Sharita Emery of Denton. She says she'd rather that than pay up the fine. $75 is just outrageous when you know you don't have it. Our, our economy is dropping, the government is failing us. I mean, $75 for me is it's just too much. So to avoid that law, you know, where are your Bluetooth? Simple as that. Distracted driving, a central focus here in Maryland. Now Maryland joins 11 states and the district on putting a ban on talking on handheld cell phones while driving. And in case you're interested, they are now one of 41 states and the district to put a ban on texting while driving. Of those 41 states, that includes Virginia and Delaware. All of this being done to try and save lives. Reporting live in Wicomico County, Evan Kozloff, WBOC News, Salisbury. Yeah, rather than holding a lengthy election process, the council decided to do a simple majority vote. And in the end of a four to one, it was David Genshaw who selected as the acting mayor. But now one of the councilwomen who was not selected says that it's her race and gender that are to blame for her loss. At this week's council meeting, David Genshaw takes his seat as the new mayor, replacing outgoing Mayor William Bennett. But one of the councilwomen wasn't there to see it. She was outside of the building in protest of his selection. I just feel like I'm more worthy than the person that they're going to allow to take that seat. And why am I not worthy of the seat tonight? Is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm a woman? My dream has been deferred. Race and gender. On the 50th year anniversary of MLK's I Have a Dream speech, she says that discrimination is still very much alive in Seaford. The vote happened right here in the council chambers at Seaford City Hall and was all about filling this empty seat left by Mayor Bennett. And in the end, it came down to a four to one vote, four votes for Councilman Genshaw, and just one for Councilwoman Pat Jones, voted by herself. It's absolutely not about race. Uh Genshaw, the man selected for the job, says the color of her skin has nothing to do with it. And he says he didn't even know Jones was interested in the position. This is not something we campaigned for. The, uh, there was a discussion of how we wanted to move forward to fill this position. Did we want to uh, have an election, which would have taken a significant amount of time? Outside Town Hall, the people we spoke to say that race should not be a part of it. Well, I don't believe that the race card should be thrown anymore. This is 2013. We're pretty much all created equal now. 50 years since the famous speech and race and gender are still being discussed. Now Jones tells me that this protest will only continue for this week and she says that next week she will be joining her colleagues on council for the meeting on September the 10th. Reporting live in Sussex County, Evan Kozloff, WBOC News, Seaford. The man dedicated himself to teaching others about God and people say this just makes it even more shocking that he was shot and killed Sunday afternoon. Now as they prepare for his funeral, WBOC took a trip to the church he helped found and spoke with the current preacher about the man who was taken far too early. The electronic piano played at the Milford Church of Christ Tuesday as the house of God opened for yet another day. But on this morning, it was without one of its most important members. Never in anyone's lifetime would they thought that anything would happen to, to Pete. Pete, as he was known, real name Clarence Short, was shot and killed Sunday after a dispute with a 42-year-old tenant named Alonzo Johnson. Now, preacher Dan Nichols tries to help the congregation move forward. Everybody who I've, I've talked to or shared calling people to different churches, they were just, I need to hang up and I'll call you back. It just, it just couldn't swallow it. It was Short who saw the need for a church in Milford more than 20 years ago, and so he led the charge for the creation of this church and became its first preacher. God, community, and country, the three things that mattered most to the man who has now lost his life. The congregation said that the person they called Pete was always there preaching, whether it was here, Seaford, or in Dover. He was just a, 
um, man who would give of himself at any time for almost anyone um, and just a passion just had a passion that just exuded to anyone and everyone short retired from working full-time in milford but that wasn't the end of his preaching until the day that he died he led sunday services here at the seaford christian church in fact, just hours before his death Sunday morning, he was on a platform doing what he did best, speaking the word of God. Now Short was also a devoted husband and father. I spoke with his son-in-law off camera. He tells me that the family is heartbroken, but that they can rest easy knowing the legacy that Short left behind.